good key. This is going to be a nasty stretch. Another one. This is a terrible key. Why am I, what am I even thinking? You know, a few weeks ago, uh, let's see, what is it? It's Friday, March 8th, I believe. Yeah, must be, because I got plans for the 9th, which is tomorrow. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was messing around with, with Love, Me, uh, Love Me Tender, which you probably recognize that I was just playing there. And for some reason, I just, I just randomly put in the key of G and started, started messing around with it. And then um, I think later that week, one of my students came in and we started talking about it. And he said, oh, it's not in G, it's in D. And I thought, well, yeah, I'd sort of forgotten about the song. It didn't, didn't really matter. And then we listened to the original and it turned into a great, like, figured out by ear lesson. For, uh, for Fred as, as we were working on that. And, and then I thought, you know, this is the lesson I did a few weeks ago on um, uh, Can't Help Falling in Love it sort of inspired me. And again, I really appreciate the, the feedback that I got on that. It made me think, okay, I should, we should do more lessons like this that have um, more stuff you got to do on your own instead of just, you know, my, my arrangement of, of, of how, how you should play it. So, um, this turned into that, and I, I thought, well, let's let's you do it in the original key, which was D, and uh, and I hope have people, I hope you've had a chance to take a look at it. So that was a new addition this week. Um, the uh, I want to call it it's I call it a harmonization lesson, but it's also a um, work on your ear lesson and and figure out what's going on with the bass and and some stuff like that. So that was the new thing for this week. We had a few other. Oh man, last Saturday, that's it on. The second we did our one of our TG live, and I hope uh, I know I know there were like about a hundred people joined us. That was pretty cool, and uh, I spent the time talking about intervals on the guitar and where you hear them in uh, in some pretty popular tunes. Um, oh, and this one too, right? So we talked about thirds and sixths, and that, if you missed it, that has been added to the Guitar Geography course. So um, so we now have two additions to the Guitar Geography course, including the last two two live shows, one from November and one from just uh, last week. So that was uh, pretty exciting. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, and the other big news is today is the end of the first week of our three-minute challenge. I have not seen anybody post their results yet, so maybe nobody's paying attention. But I hope you guys are at least still practicing. And, um, you know, last, last time we gave away some prizes. This, this time, it might be big. I mean, it could be a refrigerator or an all-expenses-paid trip to Tahiti or, or a pack of strings from the Santa Cruz Guitar Company. One of those three things will be on our, our uh, prize list. And, uh, oh, here's another one that had some cool thirds in it, right? Anyway, so that was what we went into um, on last, last Saturday's geography course. And again, we'll do these, we'll start doing these more often, at least every two or three months. I think it's been about, well, it was November to March, so that's, that's like five months. But another one coming up probably in, maybe not May, probably in June. Uh, let's see, I had something else I was going to talk about. Oh, um, you probably got an email, or you will very soon, about we're down to just a couple spots for camp. So the, our, our April 25th uh, to the 28th camp is, again, we're, we're capping this at 20 people, and I think there's room for three more. So if you, um, if you get that email and you want to be one of them, um, this will probably, they'll probably, be, they'll probably be gone in a couple days. So, uh, and anyway, last call for camp. Oh, and speaking of camp. Um, I gotta grab a pick here because um, some of you might know, might remember, I've talked about a lifetime friend of mine, uh, Mike Mullins, who has, uh, who is a, he's, he was in a, he's in a lot of different bands based in the Southern California area, the Cash Valley Drifters, and um, uh, a few others over the over the years, but will be joining us at camp, and he is a flat picking expert, you know, playing bluegrassy stuff and. Um, and then using the pick, he plays the mandolin. He's got a he's got a finger picking mandolin album out that 
I should make sure that you guys all know how to get that. I'll, I'll put, that, put that link in here for Mike's album. It's called uh, Eight String Sketches. And um, he's developed a technique of playing with a pick and using a finger to get finger picking effects on the mandolin. And so he plays these solo versions of tunes on the mando. So um, check out my, uh, my friend Mike's album, Eight String Sketches. And if you're thinking about joining us at camp, we're going to have now a bluegrass expert doing all that kind of stuff, Mike Mullins. Uh, let's see. What did I? Oh, the, I wanted to get to. I didn't know. Oh, I should have said this back at the beginning. The reason I played. What did I play at the beginning? Um, oh, I went through "Love Me Tender." Never mind. I should have told you that. What I I I, um, I had a lesson this week where um, sort of as 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 my student was leaving in, in passing, the question came up of I don't quite get swing time, and so we went into some stuff ab about like what makes something swing. <coughs> And uh, it, it can be sort of simple. I'm going to show you a couple songs here that are, well, the first thing is, I'm going to play two things. And they're going to have something in common. And then they're going to have something different. You should recognize this. I don't know, we're not going to do this not in the original key. We're going to do this in the key I usually teach it to students. You should recognize that as two things. You might recognize what song it is, but there are hundreds, thousands of songs that could go like that. But if you heard this, then you might think, oh, it's some Chuck Berry song. Or you might hear something similar. attempts at two different Chuck Berry intros that are like many of Chuck's songs they fall into the category of 12 bar blues because that progression I just played was how Johnny B. Good would go in the key of A. I think Chuck it's usually played in the key of B flat just because that's where Chuck played it. Um, but listen to another here's another 12 bar blues tune that you know that has a bit of a different feel. <laughs> be the beginning here. Now, really different rhythm because what we had in the Chuck Berry tune was fast, first of all it was faster, and it was driving second one had a little bit of swing to it. What would it sound like without swing? Um, Johnny Be Good sound like with swing. At that speed, it's a little hard to tell the difference. But both of those just didn't sound right for those songs, right? Um, and that's because. So here's another song that you think swing might improve things. Okay, doesn't work for Here Comes the Sun, does it? So, the quick answer is that in swing time, the beats, you have to be playing eighth notes because it's where the eighth notes are that determine what makes something swing. So if my quarter notes in a song are going one, two, three, four, if I only play notes on the quarter note beat, Oh, 
I played an eighth note there. Okay, now I want to play some eighth notes in there. Now I want to play with a different real feel. Okay, the melodies were a little bit different because I was just making them up. I didn't have a real song in mind. But um, what you should have been able to hear there was that sometimes the eighth notes are not equal. Here are equal eighth notes with downs and ups. One and two and three and four and these. One and two and three and four. Now I'm saying and there, but it's not in the same place that it was when I was doing one and two and three and four. It was later, one and two and three and four. So to make something swing, you move the second, the eighth note that would be on the and, instead of being halfway through the beat, you move it two thirds of the way through the beat, which means you really feel each beat split into thirds. Da, 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 da. One, two, three, 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 one triplet, two triplet. That might be a way to even, even have syllables for those notes. So basically, in swing time, we're splitting the beats into thirds and letting the first the note on the beat take up two thirds of the beat, and the note on the and take up the, the last third of the beat. And that's what's happening in uh, Your Mama Don't Dance. You should be able to feel that rhythm in there. I should have been doing this with a pick. All of a sudden, my pick has disappeared. But and in Johnny Be Good, we hear. Now, when we split beats into thirds, that also kind of opens the door for. I'm going to get my pick back because I'm going to strum through a very slow 12-bar blues where you clearly hear, this doesn't sound like swing, but that would be one measure. One, two, three, four. say this is in a different time. This is not 4-4 four, four time because we're feeling sets of groups of three beats. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, Stormy Monday, the way the Allman Brothers did it, not so much the way T-Bone Walker did it originally, um, was play a little jazzier chords that we heard there um, than happened in the original back in the, uh, I'm going to say 40s, could have been the 50s though, for T-Bone, probably 50s. Uh, anyway, an example of very slow beats split into thirds that we then say is in 12-8 time where each group of three eighth notes is one of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two. That was one measure right there. Here's another. I'm going to end with this. I think that's probably enough, enough rambling on about, about this. But here's another really cool 12 bar blues. Oh, and even in Stormy Monday, very um, heavily embellished with chords because it's going so slow that if you just stick with the simple chord progression from like Johnny Be Good, it would be way too boring. So, um, what am I going to play? Second line gets to chord four for two measures. Back to chord one for two measures, but with a little embellishment of the descending chromatic bass line. Now we expect chord four to come in here, and it doesn't. It goes to five. I'm at six. We expected five. 
back to full, and then the turnaround. One, four, one, E7, five. And that is, this is minor, slow, slow 12 8 blues in a minor key. Another cool, cool example, that is of course the chord progression to Loan Me a Dime, as done by Boz Skaggs back in on his album, I think it was 1970, after he left the, oh what a weird coincidence, I was just listening to early Steve Miller albums today, Boz was on the first two Steve Miller albums, Sailor was the second one, oh Children of the Future, so, uh, okay, I think that is it for today, let me see if I had any other new notes, no, no other notes on my news, so, um, what else have I been playing lately, that's, Ah, enough. We'll end it with Loan, loan Me a Dime. I'll be back next week. Oh, COA meeting tomorrow for the COA people. So don't forget, on the, the 9th at noon, California time. See you later.